This is the new Elgato Stream Deck and I'm gonna try to review this in 5 minutes to help you decide if you should get one as a streamer or content creator. Let's do this! Starting off with the pros, it comes in black or white to fit different setups and is made of a robust plastic in a matte finish that is textured. Unlike older stream decks that only have buttons, basic, you have three different options to interact with this device. You get 8 buttons that are larger than older stream decks, flex, that can be mapped to whatever function you want with a display that you can customize with an icon or GIF to help you remember what you mapped it to. Bring on the memes. You also get 4 knobs that are neural and grippy that rotate with steps but no hard stops and no hard feelings, as well as a tactile click. These are also interchangeable for a very hashtag cheap buy 20 US dollars. If you want to be so extra, you gotta pay extra. They introduced DAO stacking which allows you to click and cycle between multiple actions in the stack per DAO or not. For every action, the DAO works together with the touch strip to give you 4 inputs. Rotate to the left, rotate to the right, tapping touch strip, tap and hold touch strip. The touch strip is married to the DAO so you can't use them independently but it does allow you to swipe between pages without having to sacrifice a button for the next page function like your older decks. Stream decks were initially designed for streaming. Duh. But I see it being useful for a variety of different purposes. For instance, I use this Stream Deck Plus to control all my devices in this talking headset, and this is how I have it set up. For the buttons, I have shortcut for things like color temperature presets for my Elgato key lights, favorite IQ profiles for switching up my background, opening apps or websites like YouTube, Epidemic Music, Premiere Pro, DaVinci Resolve, and such. And finally, for switching audio outputs between my gaming headset, headphones, and speakers, as well as my audio inputs between my headset mic and SM7B. You'll need to install the audio switcher plugin from the Elgato Marketplace. With the knobs, I have lighting controls on knob 1 for adjusting brightness and color temperature on my Elgato lights, camera controls on knob 2 for changing ISO white balance and such on my Elgato face cams, media controls on knob 3 for music and videos, and volume controls on knob 4 for my audio inputs and outputs as well as game, discord, and system sounds. I group all these in different pages based on their use cases. Personally, as a creative myself, I also program these knobs to quickly adjust brush sizes in Photoshop or scrub through my timeline in Premiere Pro. There are even plugins like Color Picker which can help you get the hex code for anything on your screen and copy the value to your clipboard. They do take a little while to set up but can definitely improve your workflow if you spend the extra effort. With this new Stream Deck Plus, you also get Wavelink and you don't even have to buy an Elgato mic. Just plug in whatever old USB mic you got from your dodgy uncle and it should work lah. You can use VST plugins that you already have to add denoising, compression, limiters, EQ and whatnot to make your voice sound awesome without fixing it in post. Of course your voice also cannot be too unique lah, like Hi, I'm Mickey! That one cannot save already. For those who are new to this, head to the official website for support, plugins and profile packs. That should be enough to get you started. Moving on to the cons. Straight off the bat, the buttons are the same as the previous decks. Many call them mushy. Hot take, I don't find them mushy, but I do find them a little weird. Like, if you try to press it here on the corner, you'll get a bit of a tactile click, but it doesn't feel completely pressed down. And if you press it in the middle, you'll feel a slightly off half click. Hard to explain, but leave a comment down below if you know what I mean. Also, the base is non-adjustable. The angle, stand, fix. You'll need to unscrew the base at the bottom to even make it lie flat. Kind of a missed opportunity in my opinion. Finally, we have the meh, which is the limited customization. You can only change the knobs. The plates are not removable unlike previous stream decks and while you can change the background of your touch strip, it doesn't support animated wallpapers. Looking at my PC, you know I cannot live without wallpaper engine, right? Like that how the twinsy. Also, while being very customizable, there are still limitations to the controls. For example, buttons and dials are limited to their own categories. You cannot add button or key functions to the dial button and vice versa. Here's a quick recap of the pros, mass and cons of the Stream Deck Plus. Hey, done reading? Faster lah, I got a video to finish. All in all, the Stream Deck Plus is definitely a plus with some very minor quirks. I like how compact it is given how functional it can be not only for streamers but whoever wants to improve their workflow. Also, it just looks cool on my desk and sometimes it's good enough reason for me to whip out my wallet but because of Elaine, I have to make this entire video review to justify my purchase. If you find this video helpful, don't forget to like and share. Leave a comment down below if you have any questions regarding the Stream Deck Plus and I'll try my best to reply to you. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit that notification bell. Uh, follow us on Facebook, TikTok and Instagram to see more shenanigans from the Maha Screw. Again, my name is Shane. The Bang Sawan, and I'll see you in the next one. <sighs> How? Did we make it?